Today we're going to talk about Eton and Duran transmission. This transmission has different names. It has Cummins and Durant, Packard and Durant, or Eton Ultra Shift. They all the same transmission. It's just different names. Uh, and the reason why they call it like that is because Packard with uh, Packard engines on KW Peter builds, they use Eton as their transmission. So they call it Packard Endurance instead of Eton Endurance. Cummins when they when any engine any any vehicle has a Cummins engine especially a X15 uh is going to have a Eton endurance so that's a Cummins endurance and in general uh is still a Eton endurance but anyway but anyway that was just the a little background of the transmission uh, today uh we're not talk about this transmission because you know it's not a set of problems we are always going to find problems with any type of transmission especially the automatic ones um and in this case this transmission is not fully automatic it's like kind of like a semi-mechanical and automatic because we're still using mechanical movements to do things but with the difference is then you are not controlling the transmission it's the computer the one that does all the movement and um and and that creates many different problems that are very expensive to fix and that's one a problem that we're going to be talking about today so in this case with this transmission we have this following code that you can see on the screen and uh the inertia break the inertia brake is basically the clutch brake of a transmission, a Eton endurance transmission. Um, uh, what it does is basically the inertia brake is going to stop the motion of the shaft inside the transmission, the counter shaft and the main shaft, uh, when the clutch is applied. Uh, I don't know if you ever uh, draw a manual transmission, but when you are driving a manual transmission, when you're in a fully stopped situation, and you're trying to put the gear on and you apply the clutch and you hear that the gears are grinding kind of like that that means that the clutch brake is not doing its job uh, the clutch is not fully stopping and that is the reason why the gears are continuously moving um, uh, the clutch brake in this case on the Eton Endurance called the inertia brake its only job is to stop the gears when you apply the brake so that way the gear introduction the gear shifting gets in the right synchronization and a smoother uh, pace um, how it works i will say i will give you a little detail on how it works the eton endurance uh inertia brake uh the it works at the same time the clutch works so whenever you uh switch from n to d to start driving at that moment the computer immediately sends a signal to release a specific amount of air to the clutch actuator and the clutch actuator is going to press the clutch and at the same time that the clutch is getting pressed with the air pressure that same pressure is going to go to the inertia brake to stop the counter shaft in this case the uh, uh, Eton has the uh, inertia brake right at the counter shaft but and that was the problem that we were having I mean like uh, uh, the counter shaft wasn't stopping the, whenever you put the gear on uh, the counter shaft wasn't doing anything and that uh, that was the code thing uh, this uh, period bill was giving us with this Eton Endurance transmission uh, so there is one on, there is only one thing to do to repair this failure and it's to drop the transmission to replace the counter shaft uh, inertia brake um, there is no way to do this job without removing the transmission sadly uh, the inertia brake it is inside the house in the transmission so uh, there is no way you are going to be able to drop the transmission or I mean to do it with the transmission in place so but anyway if you want to drop the transmission you want to remove the transmission it isn't that hard it's just just as any transmission so many things hooked to the transmission you have to remove all that and all the bolts of the housing and then you drop Transmission replacements or transmission removals are not very difficult since they all use the same basic. Uh, the difficulty is going to increase depending on the chassis, depending on the application of the vehicle. Um, but uh, that will be up to 
you to discuss that depending on the vehicle you're working on but anyway uh we are talking about the inertia brake and of course then we need to replace the inertia brake and the inertia brake isn't hard to replace and that's the reason why i'm doing this video to show you how to replace it of course then uh once you have the transmission removed you just want to remove a couple bolts around the uh a housing of the inertia brake and um and also you have to remove the airline then you know then supplies the air to the to, to, to this uh, brake and um, pretty basic I mean like once you do that you're just gonna pull it out I mean like of course and then there are other things in front of this uh, inertia brake and that that is the the actual level then pushes the clutch in and uh, that's pretty easy to remove you just pull it and it will come out um, and um, uh, when you remove that uh, you're just gonna notice the oil then it's gonna drop it's normal because uh, is part of the transmission basically the housing is connected directly to the inertia brake so if you see all contamination inside the brake uh, it's nothing to worry about it's normal completely normal so you remove that completely you get it out of the way and everything and uh, once you do that uh, you're gonna find and that is the inertia brake uh, uh, I will say a pack of plates in small uh, cloches, those are the ones that uh, stop the motion of the counter shaft. And um, uh, to replace these are, uh, it's not very hard, uh, it's nothing complicated, and uh, you just uh, remove the seals, remove all the components, uh, whatever thing is part of the of the job, and then you uh, remove this, the, the, the small uh, plate and, and, and cloches, and once you remove them, I mean, like, uh, there is no, there is no, just one way you can install them. Just be sure you're just gonna put one plate, one clutch, two plates, one clutch, two plates, one clutch, and another plate. And that's the way it goes. If you put it backwards, it's not going to work or it's going to make sounds. Um, so it's not going to be pretty nice. So it has to be the right way. If not, that is the only complicated part. You start inside inserting the clutch and the plates together on this uh, inertia brake. Other than that, it's just pretty easy. You just like, put it all together. Remember to put the seals and everything. There is no specific installation instructions. All you have to do is make sure that everything is aligned properly. Uh, and there is no uh, a way on how you're going to install the housing in the wrong position. There is only one way on how you're going to install the housing. If you put it backwards, it's not going to fit. Uh, because the airline is not going to fit and if you put if you try to uh, uh, ro locate the uh, the plate the uh, inertia brake uh, housing in the in the ground holes uh, it's not going to fit anyway because it has a specific way in why it was and um and that as simple as that you just put it back and that's it i think the hardest part of doing this job is removing the transmission and understanding the problem because in, in, when, when I had the difficulty I had with this specific truck was then sometimes it was not showing the fault. The truck was running and everything and it was not showing anything about the inertia brake having problems. And sometimes the inertia brake problem pop up immediately. So uh, that would be one of the um, maybe biggest challenge you can face. The, if the problem doesn't show you won't be able to know but with the Eaton software you can easily identify the problem by seeing then the shaft is not actually stopping the main shaft or the counter shaft both of them have to stop whenever you are pulling gear on so whenever whenever you are applying the gear uh, the uh, counter shaft and the main shaft gotta stop completely I mean not completely immediately but you know gradually maybe within one second to two seconds gotta be almost fully stopped and then uh, 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 that's the time you want to introduce the gear so um, the thing is like uh, if you don't uh, if you don't uh, if you don't see that probably it's going to be hard for you to get the problem anyway uh, uh, this was just a little video about the Eton Endurance transmission and uh, uh, these transmissions are a little complicated just like DT12 transmissions and any other transmission they are semi-aromatic, uh, mechanical and aromatic transmissions joined together. They create many different problems and are very hard to fix. But uh, we are going to go through different problems here in this channel and to show you what it's like to repair these transmissions and show you the best steps on how you can maintain these transmissions running with no problems. 
Uh, well, I mean, like, this is all I have for you at this moment. If you have any questions about this transmission, this specific problem with the inertia brake, you can comment below then, uh, and, and, and then you can uh, we see if we can answer that question that you have. Um, uh, remember then, uh, working on these transmissions, Eton and Durant transmission, um, requires special tools, requires special experience, and requires time and location. So if you don't have any of that, please don't work on them. And if you have, if you feel that you're gonna do something bad, ask, ask someone, hey, you know what, how I do this, how I do that? So that way you don't make any mistakes because these transmissions are not cheap, they're very expensive, and also they're very complicated. So just my advice, but don't feel fear of failing, just try, and eventually you're gonna be a good mechanic, or you as a owner operator, if you wanna do it yourself, I mean, eventually you wanna do it good, so no problem. All right, so this is all I have for you. Uh, Instagram, Francisco Maya YouTube, that's how you can find me. And thank you for watching, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. It's gonna be soon, so. Mm.